<laughs> All right, guys, so today we're going to be checking our piston, or not our piston, but our intake valve to bore clearance since the intake valves have been enlarged. It's something you should always do when you got new valves, at least bigger ones. Always check, you know, your clearance you got. So we got number one right here, we got the spring off it, and we know that it clears the bore because we're not hitting the bore. Well, we want to know how much we have for clearance, so we're going to flip this block around and check it. All right, so we got the head on, we got the valve in there. And I'm just going to show you, we do clear just barely. We're going to stick a feeler gauge in there and see how much clearance we got. We know the valve's only going to open, you know, yay much at maximum, so you don't really have to take a whole lot. Right now, we're sitting, the valve is compressed all the way down to the keepers. Yeah, we got plenty of clearance. If it grows more than that, there's 20,000. I understand, Wendy. We have 20 thousandths, and then some. We probably have 25 thousandths worth of clearance. Will we set it at 25? Yeah. I think we'll be fine. I think so. <coughs> the valve shouldn't grow that much. Much more than the other ones. But anyways, guys, you see what we're doing? It's just a good idea to do it, and be sure. I'll give you a look at each of the chambers. But that's what we're working on right now. Then we're gonna get that crankshaft stabbed in her. Now we're gonna be getting these main bearings installed. These are Clevite tri-metal bearings from Rock Auto. They are pretty daggone good bearings. And we're gonna be taking our volley lube and just putting a little dollop on each bearing just that way there's a little bit of uh, lubrication on the metal on metal surface very important to do that obviously you install the underside of the main bearing dry but on the crank side you want it well lubricated all right guys don't mind a little bit of break because someone i'm pointing at that one the older one forgot to clean all the main caps thanks dad it sure as hell wasn't me promise it wasn't me That's the only place that I want to put it. Okay, it was me. Here you can see me gently lifting our freshly polished and balanced crankshaft into the block. And then we're going to put a little bit of engine assembly lube on each of the main bearing journals on the crank itself. We want to make sure everything is very well lubricated. And now we're going to be taking our freshly cleaned main caps with bearings installed and getting everything test fitted, making sure everything's going to be assembled just right, getting them tapped on. You don't want to force anything on. And then we're going to take our main bolts and lubricate the threads. You want a little bit of oil so that way you get a nice torque on them. And we're just going to run them down snug with the speed wrench. So that's pretty much what we're doing. Enjoy. Yeah, I need a smaller washer, apparently. The small block Mopar windage tray takes a special main bolt with a stud that's threaded at the end of it for a little bolt, little quarter inch bolt. And they didn't go all the way down the block the first time, so I put a little washer. That washer wasn't going to work. So we found out there was a little more area to tap, so we tapped them and cleaned out the bosses for the threads. And now we can actually bolt everything down without having a washer and the crank spins absolutely beautifully, which you will see here in a second. Like I said, it bends absolutely beautifully. The next step is to obviously torque everything down. We did them in a two sequence pattern. 45 or 50 foot pounds and then we went to the max torque of 85 foot pounds on these main caps and we do that just because it's the way we like to do it we don't like to go full torque all at once and every time you get done torquing down it in sequence make sure you spin it so that way you know maybe where the problem is we didn't do it here but do as i say not as i do spinning 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 spinning, spinning. Ding dong, ding dong, ding. all right so we're going to check the ring gap 
you're going to take your ring, make sure it's a top ring, and this one's got a little nibby on it. So, you shove her in there like so. And you take, we got our flat top piston. You slide it down in there until it's flat. And then you can check your ring gap. And visually, you don't have to put a feeler gauge in there. It's good to go. You'll want to use a flat top piston because obviously it's flat and a dome piston obviously it's a dome, duh, and it's just better for checking your ring. I apologize for the next brief moments, but you're going to see a lot of speed footage, so you've been warned. And now we're just getting everything lubed up, all the cylinders, just light coating of lube. You don't want metal on metal contact. You need some kind of lubricity, especially that first start. While I'm doing that, Dad's getting all the piston ring grooves cleaned out. So that way we can get all the rings installed. I already got this one ready to go. Number one piston already in. We're gonna get that baby flipped around. We're gonna get this first rod cap put on. And of course, we're gonna get all these rod journals uh, lubed up. Again, no metal on metal, no dry anything. There you see there's a coating on it. We're getting that bearing installed. That was a bad idea. Better to go ahead and have these bearings installed when you're putting the rod through. You risk dropping one but it's so much easier, trust me. Words of experience. See me tightening down these rod caps? That is simply snugging them down. I am not torquing anything, but after every snugging, I'm going to check it, make sure it still spins, because obviously it's better to find out the engine stops spinning after putting a number two rod versus getting all eight rods in. Just saying. And now we see the Michael E. Install the piston rings on these Dome 10-5 pistons. Hmm, watch and learn. Oh, the skill involved in his abilities. One thing the Grand Wise Wizard is doing is he is installing each piston ring offset to not leak compression or oil. And like a fine orchestra, you can see the two bumbling. Well, okay. You see, you, you basically see us getting everything put together. And <laughs> when you're uh, installing them, I use the blunt end of my uh, plastic mallet that's from the finest of Harbor Freights. And I just punch the pistons in and rinse and repeat that eight times. A lot of fun. Please enjoy. I'm done being a moron now on camera. Once everything's in it, I'm gonna coat everything with some cutting oil just to keep it from rusting and keep it all nice and lubricated. We're getting ready to torque rod caps to 45 foot pounds. Dad's torquing, I'm spinning the engine over. I have the fun job. Seeing all this work come together right now, watch those pistons go up and down, damn near it brings a tear to my eye. I find myself very blessed to be able to do this kind of stuff and share it with you guys. All right, so now we're checking valve to piston clearance. We got dial indicator set up on the top of the valve, set right at zero. We'll just, yeah, there we go. And let the valve slowly open. 100, 200, and 265 thousandths, and 64 thousandths. 10, 20, 30, no, because you go around the other way. Oh, the other way. 10, 20, 35, 6, 7, 237. So we got plenty. Yeah, unless it's going to open the valve 237,000. It's only 55,000. That's almost a quarter inch. Yeah. 
So we got plenty of clearance unless the unless the lift is you know enough to move that much. It's a pretty good little amount. So we ought to be fine. Well there we go guys. Whole lot of work, whole lot of dingy dingy. Look at that piston sticking up out of the deck. Ah, it's a good day. Everything's all shiny, everything's all nice. Look at that. Real happy with this one. And it turns so easy, it's ridiculous. I'm just using my Proto Crescent Wrench here. It's not real big. Turns it over like butter, as you've seen. We were kind of worried at first when we are putting it together because the crank was hard to turn. Well, it's hard to turn by hand, but when you get just a little bit of leverage on it, it's butter smooth. Oh, she is coming together. I'm just waiting on our cam to get here and a few other things. And, you know, we got all of our parts in that box. Um, we got the heads up there, which we checked for valve clearance. And, you know, the funniest thing, I'm going to show you the guys this. I got on Rock Auto. And they said they carried the push rods for this engine. And I was like, there's no way Rock Auto carries push rods for a solid lifter 273. They do. Right off the shelf. Ball and cup style push rods. I couldn't even begin to believe it. And they weren't that expensive. I think they were like 60 or 70 bucks. It wasn't bad in comparison to normal push rods i mean if i went and had a no set made it'd been about 120 130 so we got push rods for it <coughs> so i guess we might get a new oil pan still not real sure about that the windows tray is just sitting on it right now but i guess we'll see what happens guys i appreciate you watching i don't know what parts i've included in this section maybe this is part two maybe this is part one you know what i'm a bad creator because i'm not real organized about it but you know what you guys will find out, and I appreciate all you guys watching this. This is one step closer to getting the old yard dart going. And just to remind everybody, the yard dart. My 1966 Dodge Dart GT Factory 273 automatic 8 and 3 quarter badass mobile. Oh yeah, I can't wait to get her going. But anyways guys, I just want to say thank you for watching. If you liked it, leave a like below. If you really liked it, comment. And if you thought it was just a really good video, maybe even subscribe if you're new, because that'd be awesome. Dad and I would appreciate it. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Before you go i just want to inform you i had to run back here because the camera's about to die so i'm a fat guy fat guys don't run very good i think i need a cheeseburger <sighs> yeah definitely gonna need another cheeseburger maybe with bacon on it oh large cheesy fries yeah anyways thanks for watching i'll see you the next one bye